Oh, good morning to baristas. Well, as you no doubt know if you've been around the last 20 years, Cold War triumphalism rules the Western historical consensus. We, meaning the Western elites, not you and me, won the Cold War. We have been vindicated, vindicated on the right side of history. And so the Western court prophets pronounced for nearly two decades until the capitalist meltdown. Yet it seems that Karl Heinrich Marx is having the last laugh from deep inside his tomb at Highgate Cemetery East in London. I happen to have a copy of the Communist Manifesto, that pornographic classic of Western economy. Of course you would as though with your glorifying Stalin and gulags and famines. Well, first of all, this has as much to do with gulags and famines as Adam Smith or Jean-Jacques Rousseau had with Joe McCarthy or the Vietnam War. So, in the opening paragraphs, we read, Our epoch is the epoch of the bourgeoisie and possesses, however, this distinct feature. It has simplified class antagonisms. Society as a whole is more and more splitting up into two great hostile camps, into two great classes directly facing each other, bourgeoisie and proletariat. Further on, we're told, the lower strata of the middle class, the small tradespeople, shopkeepers and retired tradesmen generally, the handicraftsmen and peasants, all these sink gradually into the proletariat, partly because the diminutive capital does not suffice for the scale on which modern industry is carried on and is swamped in the competition with the large capitalists partly because their specialized skill is rendered worthless by new methods of production. Thus, the proletariat is recruited from all classes of the population. The other classes decay and finally disappear in the face of modern industry. The proletariat is its special and essential product. The lower middle class, the small manufacturer, the shopkeeper, the artisan, the peasant, all these fight against the bourgeoisie to save from extinction their existence as fractions of the middle class. And, in part two, we read, you are horrified at our intending to do away with private property, but in your existing society, private property is already done away with for nine-tenths of the population. Its existence for the few is solely due to its non-existence in the hands of those nine-tenths. You reproach us, therefore, with intending to do away with the form of property, the necessary condition for whose existence is the non-existence of any property for the immense majority of society. So, our free market system is behaving exactly as it was predicted to do. The gloating triumphalism of the Cold War is replaced by Marx's specter, yet lingering over the West's property rights, yet overshadowing the destruction of the Western middle class by the gutting of the labor of generations. But as so, though they said this same stuff 80 years ago, during the Great Depression, and everything bounced back just fine. This proves the dynamic essence of free market freedom. Well, it didn't just bounce back. Keynesian economics, that classic mixed economy so much like the false socialisms Marx railed against, saved the capitalist system from imploding. Removing the economic checks and balances of the Great Depression era has again exposed the weak, crumbling foundations of the whole structure. And with no regulation, no economic zoning laws, if you will, it's been top-loaded to the point of collapse. Secondly, it took World War II in the end, to rescue the West, and the Cold War was largely the need to keep the military-industrial stimulus going, like an addict needs more crack to get through the day. The war on terror is just the latest fix. The West needs to go cold turkey, the U.S. in particular, as all empires have done, not by dismantling the state or its human services, but discarding the expensive empire. Because between the ever-growing monopoly of capital in fewer and fewer hands, financial and social cost of empire, and the Supreme Court coddling these crackheads, the American Republic, the bourgeois mecca, the city on the hill, is uh, headed for a collapse that could lead us right back to the ruin and rubble of the last century. Al-Qaeda will look like a pipsqueak operation in comparison. Hmm. Who can this be now on a Sunday morning? Hello? Milton Friedman? What are you up to now? Looks like you and Von Meises and Hayek have been shooting craps over the economy again. What's that? You felt you had to respond to this attack on the free market? That depressions are caused by interfering in this natural process? Well, what interference or regulation was there when the whole shit house collapsed in late 2007? If the federal government didn't bail out the holders of capital, they'd have sure drowned in their own excrement. In fact, the government is rolling all the fallout downhill on us, just as it should be, right? The little people, the cogs in the machine, that you always ignored as you went from lecture to lecture telling the haves that when the government taxes, it steals, but when they steal, it's called innovative entrepreneurship. 
Are you sure you really aren't Karl Marx in some drag reincarnation? Uh huh. And you're planning a comeback? Who's it going to be? If I have to ask, I wasn't supposed to know.